My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you all for being with us uh, today from Holy Cross Parish to celebrate this Mass. We're very happy to come to your homes uh, in this Mass uh, as we celebrate God's love for us and as we celebrate this holy season of Lent. Uh, we also want to welcome those outside of our parish, uh, those who watch us from other parts of the city and some places, uh, other parts of our country. And we thank God for all of you. And we also thank you for your support. That means a lot to us and helps us to keep on doing what we do here at Holy Cross, trying to fulfill the mission of Jesus Christ. As we come together as God's people, we ask the Lord for his mercy and his forgiveness. Lord, you were sent by the Father to bring good news to the poor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to save us from sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, you were sent to proclaim the grace, the mercy, and the compassion of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the author of every mercy and all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Judeans was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who had sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen, and spilled the coins of money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Judeans answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Judeans said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken to them. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus <clears throat> would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood very well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear the Ten Commandments uh, from the book of Exodus, uh, where Moses uh, went up the mountain and he came back to his fellow uh, Judeans, his fellow Israelites, and proclaimed these wonderful laws of the Lord. And the purpose of the Ten Commandments was not just the Ten Commandments. They were a way in which we bond ourselves to God. And I think it's important for us to understand that because sometimes people look at the law as the whole purpose and the whole goal of our faith and responsibility. It's not. The law is not the center of our faith. It's our relationship with God that's our, the center of our faith. The rules, the laws of, of, of God are there to, to help us in this bond with God, to teach us how to grow in our relationship with God. But there are some people who just stay with the law. And when they do that, they can become somewhat perverted and sometimes miscast and sometimes misled. As we see where Jesus goes in the temple, where all these people are there changing the temple from a place of prayer and holiness to a marketplace just to fulfill laws of sacrifice and all those other things that were required of them. 
I remember when I was in the seminary, uh, there was a book that we had to read, and I can't believe I still remember it because that was such a long time ago. It was a book called Sin, Liberty, and Law. And uh, I remember that book. I enjoyed that book. And I remember there was a story in that book, and it was a story about a, a, a woman that was in prison. And I'm not too sure exactly what her crime was, but as she was in prison, she, she had to follow the rules. The rules for her was that she had to wash the floors, she had to do the laundry, she had to do all kinds of various activities. If she did not, she would be punished. So she followed the rules so she would not be punished. Anyway, in the story, and this is like a Hollywood story, uh, apparently she met the warden. And somehow, some way, they fell in love. And after she was finished with her time in prison, and a little more time in her, her understanding, her relationship with the warden, they got married. And here she is after she's married, and she's back again in the prison area where she was before. She's washing floors, uh, she's doing laundry, but she's not doing it because it's a law and she can get in trouble if she doesn't do it. She's doing it out of love. She loves her husband. She loves her family. So she does, she does these things out of love, not of keeping rules and commandments. I know sometimes I, I run into some married people, and I remember one time I ran, I ran into a, a, a guy, uh, and he was saying to me, I don't know what's wrong with my wife. I, I do everything. I go to work. I, I do everything. I go to work. I bring home money for the family and so forth. And she says, somehow or other, our marriage isn't very good. And the question is going to be, well, how is your relationship with your wife? Well, I work and I go to, I, I get money and I bring home, you know, support for my family. I says, but what about your relationship with your wife? What's your relationship in your, in your, in your marriage to her? It's more than just working. It's about a relationship. And so it's important for us to know that our faith is not about rules. Rules are there to guide us. But the important thing is, where is in your life this relationship with the Lord? Do you feel this love for the Lord? Do you feel his love for you? And these commandments will become life-giving if it's based upon a love relationship rather than a legalistic system that many people live by today where their religion is not a religion of life but a religion of law and burden. So we ask the Lord to help us to understand his love for us and the many ways he wants us to know that love and he wants us to love him. And he gives us directions, he gives us instructions. This is how you can love. And we use these instructions not for anything else but to grow closer to our loving God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now present our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the Pope's visit to Iraq, that he be protected and that he bring the message of Christ to that part of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops, priests, deacons, and ministers, that they may faithfully guide us to Jesus, the source of living water. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for government leaders, that they may work to heal the ancient quarrels that continue to divide people of many nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who thirst for meaning and hope in their lives, especially those suffering from broken relationships, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may be the kind of worshipers the Father wants, a people who worship in spirit and truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the parish mission in building community and furthering the spiritual goals and needs of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they share in the fullness of God's glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Frank and Sarah Marchese, Louis and Rose Felino, Al and Dorothy Balweg, Wes and Nancy Hawk, Jack Parr, Jerry Reynolds, Carville Butner, John Miller, and Bill Schumacher, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this wonderful bond with you, this covenant. Help us, Lord, to love you as you love us, as we continue to follow your instructions, your guide, your help, as we continue to grow in our relationship with you and with one another in love. Answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mistress of water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we accept by you, O Lord, may our sacrifice your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech your pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world so as to hold rather to the things that are eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, all the clergy, and your beloved sons and daughters. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this make me a Bible, Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of your Son that you give to all of us, especially through this most holy sacrament, the Eucharist. I ask you, Lord, that as I am privileged to receive this most holy sacrament, that the graces and the love that I experience from this sacrament will also be shared with all those who are participating in this Mass today. May they feel your presence. May they feel your love. May they feel your mercy and your compassion. May they never despair of your presence in their life. The sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. Let us pray. <clears throat> As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still here on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us, in mystery, may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May all the peace, the power, and the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is now ended. Go in peace to love, to trust, and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.